What is up, comic book movie fans? My name's Jonathan, and today we have a very special episode for you. I'm going to be joined by Tommy Killingsworth of Nitro Union. He also has a YouTube channel on YouTube that you should check out. Look him up at Nitro Union. I brought Tommy along today because he's an expert when it comes to vehicles. I am definitely not. And today we're going to do a countdown, the top five superhero movie vehicles. Tommy, take it away. What is up guys, I'm Tommy Killingsworth and I run a YouTube channel called Nitro Union. Me and John go way back, many, many years. We used to play music together and uh, do all kind of crazy stuff. Fast forward all this many years later and we're both aspiring YouTube creators. We got together a while back and we're trying to think of something we could collaborate on that would be kind of cool. My expertise is automotive, do an automotive channel, anything old school cars, race cars, all that kind of stuff. Have a lot of knowledge on that kind of stuff and really into it. John's really into the comic book films and I don't know as much about them. Even though I have seen a lot of these movies and TV shows and stuff like that, I don't know a lot of backstory. I just watch them for entertainment and I do enjoy them. We're gonna try to get together on this top five, see if we can work it out. And I'll try to lend a little bit of my expertise to the selections that we make and talk about what we like about them. And it uh, should be pretty interesting. I hope you guys enjoy it. So Tommy and I talked about honorable mentions. There's a lot of vehicles featured in superhero films, but not quite enough that are iconic especially or to create a top 10 countdown that's why we decided to go with the top five one honorable mention that I would like to go ahead and throw out there is definitely Joker's purple Lamborghini from the Suicide Squad the film was pretty crap but that car is freaking awesome Tommy why don't you tell us why Captain America's motorcycle and Punisher's GTO are also featured in our honorable mentions we did end up with a couple vehicles that we wanted to mention as honorable mentions. First being Captain America's motorcycle. This would have been an early 40s era, I believe 1942 is what most of the research says, Harley Davidson. This would have been the type of bike that Harley switched over during when World War II broke out and they were producing them for the military. It's just perfect American, just an icon. I mean, Harley Davidson is an American icon as far as motorcycles go. Of course, what Captain America is, it's a perfect fit for his character. Uh, if he was gonna ride a bike, it'd have to be a Harley. And of course, from the era that he's from, it's gotta be a World War II era Harley. So yeah, cool bike, it fits the character perfectly. The second honorable mention we had was the 2004 Punisher film featured a 1969 Pontiac GTO, which he drove, and the car was just flat black, and it was just, you know, no frills. The GTO, an iconic muscle car in its own right. Of course, you had the Judge package those years on those cars, which had, would had extra stripes, extra performance features, and stuff like that. And I think that kind of fits the Punisher's uh, MO very well just kind of no frills no nonsense that car just kind of nailed on the head the way they styled it and that car is just kind of it's not as well known as some of the other muscle cars of the era but a very great car in its own right and was a great performer back in, at that time and like i said this with the styling and everything of it i think it goes well with the character and i think some thought was probably put into choosing that particular vehicle for the character i think it works really well it's definitely worth an honorable mention so at number five we have tony stark's audis over the years in all the Iron Man films and the Avenger movies. Being the non-expert that I am on vehicles, I think Audis are really sexy cars. And obviously those cars fit the character of Tony Stark very well. What do you think, Tommy? I remember when the, the first Iron Man film came out, the R8 was fairly new and I think they kind of made the, one of the bigger introductions to that worldwide audience with the car through that film. Uh, of course, the film was a pretty big deal at the time. They spent a lot of money marketing it and I'm sure Audi had a placement deal with the production and everything on that film to get that to get that particular car placed in there and rightfully so. It's a really good looking car, you know, really technologically advanced, powerful. It was Audi's new supercar. The perfect person to drive it would be 
Tony Stark. Tony did have a really cool car collection in that film as well. I remember he crushed a uh, Shelby Cobra, and next to it was a uh, was a Selene S7, a, uh, a Ford Coupe, you know, 32 Ford. Some really neat cars if you're into cars, and I, and I remember that distinctly from the movie, of course, because I'm always I'm always car spotting whenever I'm watching movies. But the Audi was really the standout. That was his kind of his kind of main ride. In later films, they had continued to place the new models of the R8, the Spider, and then they had the E-Tron. So they kind of kept up to date with using those films, I think, to kind of introduce the audience to Audi's newest rendition of the R8 and their newest supercars that were coming out or their concepts or whatnot. But I'm sure there was there was some money behind that deal that changed hands, and I'm sure it probably worked out well for both of them, you know, especially for Audi, pushing their car to a huge market. Even though it's a, it's a higher price point, I'll probably never be able to afford one, but it's not a super flashy car like a Lamborghini or Ferrari, but it has all the performance of those. Just, just really nice, technologically advanced supercar. At number four, we have Blades Dodge Charger. I love these movies. The car is awesome. And I think that it adds a lot to the character that, that Wesley Snipes plays in this movie. Probably one of my personal favorites, although I couldn't get John to agree to let's put it at number one. Uh, I'm just kidding, but uh, it's a great car. It's Blades 1968 Dodge Charger, which appeared in all three Blade films. The 68, 69, and 1970 Chargers were essentially the same body. They had a few changes, tail lights, grills, side marker lights, but more or less the same body. And this is just an iconic muscle car to begin with from the 60s and 70s. But then once you mix in the, its film appearances of that particular body style, uh, it really makes it a true icon. Bullet 1968 film, Steve Queen film Bullet where he is driving a Ford Mustang and is chased by a Charger of that body style. Great film, iconic, all that good stuff. Then you got Dukes of Hazard. That's a 1969 Charger. Can't get much more iconic than that. And then of course 2001 Fast and Furious. Dom Toretto's hero car was a 1970 Dodge Charger also in black like Blade chose. Blade 68 Charger, black. It has the classic 70s centerline wheels, aluminum wheels on it, just kind of no frills, muscle car, nothing really crazy about it, but I mean it just works. Like I said, the cars are beautiful just as they are. They don't they don't need a lot to look really cool. Personally, I love those those films and uh, I, I didn't even know, I think whenever I saw the first Blade film, I didn't even realize it was a, a comic book or based on a comic of any sort. I just thought it was a cool vampire movie, but I always loved them. And I think the car is one thing that really kind of just pushed me over the edge with the character and with in the films in particular. That car is, is really cool and pretty iconic if you're if you're into those films. At number three, we have Ghost Rider's Hell Cycle. It's pretty hard to picture Ghost Rider without his motorcycle. I think that it doesn't get more iconic than this. Tommy, tell us a little more about Ghost Rider's Hell Cycle. They say that the production, particularly from the film, they based the design of that bike around a 1960s style uh, Harley Davidson chopper. If you're not familiar with what a chopper is, a chopper is a term applied to bikes that are heavily modified. So they're just stripped down, very basic, uh, with really long front ends stretched out and stretched up and the front ends are stuck way out. And a great reference, and it's also kind of a funny reference, is the fact that Peter Fonda, who happens to play the devil in the film, also did a film in 1969, I believe, called Easy Rider. And he rode a bike that they called Captain America. And it was a, uh, they call it a panhead chopper, which the panhead refers to the type of engine that it used, a uh, different era Harley Davidson engine. So it's based on a Harley Davidson, but it's heavily modified, painted with stars and stripes, and it's an iconic motorcycle. What they did was they put Peter Fonda in that place in the movie to kind of give a nod from that bike and into that particular movie and they say that they base the styling of the hell cycle around that particular motorcycle and like i said that bike is is really cool really radical and of course it's, it's on fire a lot of the time so you don't really know exactly what it is so at number two we have green hornets black beauty chrysler really just a super cool car cosmetically it looks awesome we're not by any means saying this film was great or in any sort of top 10 at all but the car is really cool. And just like Robin said, chicks dig the car. Tommy, tell us a little more about Green Hornet's Black Beauty Chrysler. 
from the original TV series all the way up to the 2011 film. They kept the same body style. Of course, they updated it a bit. I actually have a 1963 Chrysler Imperial. So they're really cool cars. And this was a car that Chrysler decided to build and they actually made Imperial a completely separate brand, but it was something that they built as a luxury car to compete with Cadillac and Lincoln and uh, the other luxury makers at the time. In the early 60s, there was a, there was a pretty big market for really large luxury cars. That was what they were going for. But whenever they adapted that Imperial to the Black Beauty in the series, it was it was pretty bad. They turned it up. They put rocket launchers and machine guns, you know, just all these different gadgets and stuff on it. Of course, they changed the body up a little bit, changed the front end from what it looked like from the factory to kind of to kind of fit the mystique of the role. And I think it worked really well. They did the green headlights and you know that whole deal. And uh, and of course, it's it's a big part. Of, uh, of that character as well and and the film and the TV series um, the car you know played a pretty major role and is iconic for that reason of course whenever they did the 2011 film took the same body car they put bigger wheels on it just kind of updated the look cleaned it up a little bit and it looks really sharp they did a really good job with it still still kind of keeping that purity you know with the same the same year and making model car but just updating it and, uh, and making it look that much cooler. Still kept all the cool gadgets, the green headlights and everything. It's not a super common car to see as far as a classic car guy. I never see Imperials really at all. Like I said, I have one. I know of a few others around. Even more particularly that, that 1965, 1966 era Imperial, like you rarely ever see them. So it's pretty neat. And like I said, a lot of people may not exactly even realize what the car is, but that is certainly what it is. And it worked out great for that role. And and it certainly will always be an icon i think in comic book films and comic book history as far as uh, as far as vehicles go uh, you got to put it right up there and that's the reason why it's sitting where it's sitting at on our list is uh, is just the fact that it is that iconic and that recognizable and for number one it was hard to go with just one batmobile so we had to go with all the batmobiles when you think of a superhero movie vehicle you have to think of the Batmobile. Every iteration of the Batmobile has been iconic in one way or another. When we go all the way back to the 60s, the original Batmobile that Adam West drove, and then we fast forward to the late 80s with Tim Burton and Michael Keaton driving this super awesome Batmobile. And once again with Christian Bale's Tumblr that was heavily featured in those Batman films as well. Tommy, give us some, some hot and dirty details on those Batmobiles. As far as vehicles go and comic book films, it really, I don't think you could get any more iconic than the Batmobile. Of course, there are so many different iterations, even all the way back to the 1940s Batmans, uh, all the way up until current. But I, I think really we're going to cover three the three main ones, in my opinion, and I think John agrees with me, would be the 1966 series Batmobile, the 1989 Batmobile, and then of course the uh, the Christian Bale Dark Knight Batmobile. I think those are probably the most iconic three, and instead of making them three different numbers on the top fives, consider we did decide to do a top five, we wanted to lump them all together, because I think any one of the three would surpass anything else, honestly. So, starting out with the earlier one, 1966 television series Batmobile. This vehicle started out as a 1955 Lincoln concept car. Uh, this is a car that never went into production. Legendary designer George Barris purchased this car at auction for one dollar from the original maker and whenever they're done with these concept cars they just sell them at auction or work out a deal uh, they technically can't let them go to the public many times just because they're not registrable they're not up to safety standards and whatnot so of course he purchased this car probably at auction or worked out some kind of deal and purchased it to build uh, the Batmobile with. So he took this vehicle, George Barris, legendary movie car builder from Vehicles and the Monsters, Dragula, and of course the Monsters coach, just tons and tons of iconic film vehicles. So you would definitely recognize him, one of the biggest names in, in movie cars for sure. George took this, was commissioned by production to build a Batmobile. So he took this this concept car and they started working on it, changing the body around and adding little touches and stuff like that to it and, and came up with this iconic 
car, Batmobile, for the 1966 Batman series. And it is certainly iconic. I mean, you, you know, anytime you see it, you know exactly what it is. It's very specific, very unique, and it can just be spotted from a mile away. I think it will always go down in history as, as one of the great movie cars in general, not even just speaking of comic book movies, but I think just in all, you know, of, of movie cars put together, you'd have to throw that Batmobile in there for sure. The next Batmobile, I think that it, that is just incredibly iconic is 1989 Tim Burton Batmobile. This car was, you know, another completely one-off fiberglass car that was built uh, and it's just just insane to look at you know I mean there, there's there's obviously nothing in the world like it there's a few slight resemblances to some concept cars and whatnot but for the most part it's something that's completely unique completely built from scratch and uh, I mean it's it, yeah it's it's over the top and ridiculous it's it's 1989 but it's it's also amazing and it's not it's not so ridiculous I think it's pretty timeless design of course I was a four-year-old four and five-year-old kid when this movie came out and I had all the toys and I had you know all all the big version of it that was like that long and it'll, it'll always certainly be iconic to me especially just because of that childhood connection those movies were so huge at the time as well it just launched that car into the stratosphere as far as as far as popularity uh, recognizability and just just being an icon you really have to give a nod to the designers and everyone that was behind the ideas of putting it together I think it couldn't be really any better for for that time it was just the perfect storm and it, it was a really cool car as a kid of course it captured my imagination and just kind of blew my mind and of course you, you just fall in love with it you're like wow that's, that's so cool and I think even adults probably got struck the same way as far as Batmobiles just going chronologically that one's definitely up there certainly worthy of a number one spot to share it with these other two cars and of course, last but not least, 2005 Batman Begins, Christopher Nolan, the Tumblr Batmobile. This was something that it was completely different. It's not even, doesn't even really resemble a passenger car of any sort at all. Whenever you saw it, you know, again, I was just, I was just kind of blown away. I was like, wow, this, this is something that they built completely from scratch, you know, for the Batmobile, something completely different, just kind of rewriting the whole idea of, of what, you know, he would have had. I believe it was a like a concept military vehicle that they had found that was being developed and he decided to repurpose it for what he wanted to use and of course it worked out perfectly and became an iconic vehicle i think the fact that it, it is so different and so far removed from the previous batmobiles that, that we had seen that are four regular wheels and you know still kind of laid out like a normal vehicle that we're familiar with seeing and this you see this thing and you're just like wow and it's just completely oddball they actually built a working version of this thing and they, they built it from scratch for the film for their the production's ideas Nolan and all of them ha had this concept and they and that's what they wanted and they put it together and they made it work and uh, to be something just completely off the wall and not even resembling a vehicle that, that we've ever really seen before I think it just really kind of blew people away I personally love those films and I think that that Batmobile certainly also is solidified in that top spot as iconic along with the other ones simply because it was just such a great design and it was so different from anything we had seen before particularly from a Batmobile but just really anything in general it really gave you the impression that hey this this really could be some top secret thing that they were developing for for the military or something like that almost alien to anything we had seen before of course it's really cool got all the gadgets you know bounces around and does all this crazy stuff so yeah i think it's a, it's another iconic vehicle can definitely be lumped in with the icons that are the Batmobiles. And I definitely think it deserves a spot right up there along with the others. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I wanna thank John for letting me get in here and put in my two cents on this stuff. And uh, I really enjoy talking cars. I could talk about it all, all day long as far as that goes. It's always a good time and uh, hopefully we can do some more stuff. We'll come up with some more ideas and maybe get more in depth on some of these vehicles and, and do some more analysis on them. If you want more car stuff, you're welcome to check out my channel, Nitro Union. I just search it on YouTube. You'll find it. Be sure you subscribe to John's channel. Like and comment. He's trying to get this thing off the ground. And uh, he's a good dude. And I think you should, you should definitely help him out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Tommy, thank you so much for joining me for the show today. We wanted to do something a little bit different. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. 
Click the little bell to get notified every time we drop a video. We usually drop two videos a week. You can look us up on TikTok and Instagram at Real Comic Book Cinema. You can also find us on Facebook as well. Thank you so much for joining me, Tommy, and thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, have a wonderful day.